Hello everybody and welcome back at this wonderful holiday special. I just want to make sure that everything is working. I'm here with this uh, new setup. So uh, I'm just waiting for everything to go live with this new introduction. Welcome everybody. In the meantime, I can see all these lovely people in the chat. I can see Garrett Williams, Robert, um, Vladka. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, let me see if you guys can hear me. Give me um rb says fantastica clary <laughs> where are you are you in manchester tonight or you are in italy uh because you tell me that you are in my city as you know or probably don't know i am clary and i'm going to be your host today for this brand new uh christmas special we're going to be talking about paper decoration so get some scissors and get some paper and hopefully you have access to a printer because we're going to be creating decoration i'm going to show you them how to put them together, how to fold them. You can bring them literally anywhere you want, in your home, in your office. You can gift them, you can do whatever you want with them. But most importantly, you can perhaps spend your holidays with your loved ones, with your family, with your kids, with your brothers, with your sister, with your boyfriend, partner, whatever you want. And uh, you can just make and have fun spending time together creating paper decorations that you have designed, which is very exciting. So let's get going. Uh, also, most importantly, you have a freebie that goes with these uh, streams. So let me show you right away. Let me jump into my desktop so you can see the freebies uh, that actually go together with this stream. So we should be able to see them here. I'm just going to uh, open my screen in just a second. Maybe if I open the PDF, you guys should have access to both the um, PDF and JPEGs. And I'm going to show you how to use them and of course how to replicate them as well. Sorry, got a, all this paper, paper sister <laughs> uh, mess in my screen, but hopefully we'll be able to jump real quick into my desktop. And here we are. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, the PDF, or as I said, you have available these in both PDF and uh, JPEGs that is available for you as a gift. Uh, let me know if you guys can actually access it. And uh, what this gives you, let me just try to get these into a full screen. Here it is. So those are the templates. Oop, it looks like you need to give me a second here while we fix the screen. It looks like it went all blown up after I reconnected it, but we can fix that in just a second. Sorry, and I'm doing this live, the beauty of the live, but here we are, nice and quick. Okay, so here you have a full uh, view of the actual decoration themselves. I have created three different templates for you to use. Um, and uh, cold for the past two nights, says Garrett. Yes, it's absolutely freezing. That's why we're doing all this wintery stuff together uh, for your holidays. So as I say, those are the three templates that I made available for you. Also within the template itself, there is some idea of perhaps decorations. Um, if you're wondering how to create some of these illustration, those are available in the last two episodes of How To Graphic Design. Uh, as you are watching either from YouTube or Behance, you're all welcome. Your questions are welcome during this live together. And also, if you do subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel, you will be able to watch this stream again uh, and uh, also the previous stream. So the one that I was mentioning, How To Graphic Design, you will learn how to create um, also this little... Um, a little decoration as well that you can then decorate the paper decoration with. What is the actual name in English? Can you guys help me or this specific plant? Um, I don't remember what is the name name in English, but fantastic. So um, those are the three different paper decoration that I have there available for you. Let me zoom out because I want to show you a little bit more in depth what this project is about. So let me go ahead and open uh, a brand new page here. So oops. Let me just back on the landing uh, so I can make sure to open a brand new Behance because if you're watching from Behance, as I said, um, you're welcome either on Behance or on YouTube. But what I'm doing in the meantime is that I'm logging in uh, inside Behance because I want to show you where this project comes from. So uh, if you have already, if you jumped and have a little bit of a look inside my uh, Behance profile, let's see if we're here now. We should be too cloudy at once. 
There we go. We should be jumping in my profile in just a second. Here it is. There is this Absolute Vodka project, and this is the one that I am uh, willing to show you uh, because that just showcases these templates done in a very large scale. So I was tasked a few years ago to create an Absolute Vodka themed wall for Christmas. And my take on the project was to um, do this uh, doodle wall, um, which I created by hand with the help of some amazing students from Manchester uh, School of Art. Here they are, and here we are, many, a few years ago, and those are the paper decorations. So those are actually the shapes um, molded together. So as you can see, the one that I have here is the diamond, which you can see here uh, is this, this one here in cyan, here in different shapes. Then we have uh, uh, the prism, the one that looks like more like a stone, which is, uh, let me jump back into the template. So the diamond is this shape over here. The one that is more long um, is this one that is uh, at the top, the very first of the template. And then the third one is this one here that creates a diamond shape. So this one that almost like has a, a fan in front of it, that's actually um, the, the diamond shape. So if you're looking to understand what is the final product and the final output and how cool it can be, well, um, if you go and look at my profile, which is the Absolute Vodka profile inside my uh, Behance page, you will be able to see these shapes in their full, full glory in color. Now, this one here were made on some um, paper, colored paper. So that's another option. You don't necessarily need to decorate it decorate them of course here i decided to uh, just give you an example of how it looks flat as well so what i've done here is to put some decoration inside of some drawing you can do absolutely what you want you can do them themed you can put a love message into it you can do literally whatever you want but anyway those are the three shapes and that's the way that they look like and you can scale them depending on the size of your printer and uh, let me show you how that's a little bit of me painting. I was just trying to see here. Here they are. Those are some flyers that are created. And literally, you can put them anywhere. You can hang them. Um, if you do make a Christmas tree, you can use them for your Christmas tree. Or you can simply leave it on the table. Um, or maybe just gift them as a, a message. Okay. So here, as I said, in this project, you will be able to... Here it is. Those are hanging on the table, on the on the wall. And I remember when I created that project, people were loving this decoration so much that I had to go back and fill the wall again and create some more because everybody was just kind of taking them because they were just hanging uh, with some transparent nylon wire and uh, everybody was just taking them away. Uh, let me see. Becca is saying, Holly. Okay, that's the name of the plant that I was mentioning before. So this little plant here, it's the holly. I don't know how to call it in Italian. Sometimes my, my brain just kind of just goes. <laughs> and I don't know neither the English or the Italian. I'm just like frozen. Carol Perro says origami. Also, almost origami. And I'm just going to give you a quick look here. You can also find some origami paper. That's a teapot. If you fancy more paperwork, I've also designed this origami. This is like actually my design. I've used to run a workshop at the People History Museum. Um, there's more here. Uh, I'm happy to show you. You can get it from here or I'm happy to share it with you. Um, I used to run this workshop um, with origami. Now, the difference between origami and this geometric shape decoration is that origami um, is usually without glue. So it's all paper and uh, the decoration are with glue. So as you can see here, we have some of these uh, flaps at the end, which we're going to use to glue. So those flap, little flaps here which we can bend, but differently from origami that just kind of stays on its own without the use of any glue. When you create decoration and stuff like that, we will need glue. So if you see, go back into the flyer that I created for you. That's the actual original InDesign file that I have no problem sharing with you uh, for the JPEG that you guys can access as a free gift for this holiday stream. Um, it says already that you will need uh, glue First step, you will need to cut the shape out of the sheet of paper. Then you have to scour it along the dots and then fold it. And then you will have to glue the model together. And again, if you need inspiration for the final shape, just reference my Absolute Vodka um, profile, um, Behance project, 
and that's where you'll be able to find the final look of the shape if you want to i think that this is the picture perhaps where you can look at them a little bit better um but i think that once you start to have um you know the actual folded item it just kind of just folds on its own so they're not very complex agrifoglio it might be agrifoglio <laughs> i don't know i wish my mom and dad were here uh so they're always watching the stream and uh, I always, uh, they're not here today, but it would be nice to know if there anybody else that speaks Italian. My brain is just frozen with English. Sajid said, origami just paper and kirigami is cutting edges and shape. Oh, yes. So kirigami, that's fantastic. I'm actually learning and it's amazing. I love, I love to learn um, new things during this stream. But let's go ahead and open Illustrator so I can show you a little bit more on how to uh, make the most out of these uh, um of gift that I've uh, shared with you because uh, something else is that I don't want you to keep wasting paper and have all this ink as well if you see I was a little bit in doubt when I've done the flyer the flyer has all this blue um, which you can use also to cut out and paste on top of the um, origami so you have two options you can just use the paper that is around in white uh, or you can actually print the one with the, with the blue and the decoration and then you can print it over the paper uh, in the past i've seen students literally printing two two um sheets one with the folded instruction the other one just with the colors and then uh, kind of glue them together just to make the paper thicker you can do as many times as many um, different kind of things that you want. You can also just simply print it um, as it is. Just I'll show you how you can get to something like that. So you can get rid of all the uh, blue that is uh, around so you don't waste ink. And if you want, you can just use one paper as the main um you know template and then you can just score it on a cardboard so if you were looking to, to do something maybe like the one that i've done for my absolute project uh, all you have to do is to just simply have a paper template cut it out so it's nice and flat like this and then from here you can use this one put it on the actual cardboard paper or whatever you want that maybe is a little bit thicker and then just simply score it with a pen or trace it so you can use this as a flat template as well so many ways to have fun this is the purpose for you to use this time during the holidays to get together and use this decoration as an activity and of course as something that you can embellish your desk at home or in the office but let's go back into illustrator and let's start together so first of all i'm going to click on a new file in order to open up a new document and uh, thank you so much wade as usual super helpful really appreciated wade has shared the absolute vodka project link in the chat so if you wish you can either go through my profile on behance.net and here we are also live on behance.net slash live if you're on youtube jump up on behance if you want to share the project way to share the link there so you can have access to it and um Again, that's a clickable link. So thank you so much, Wade. I can see Karen in the chat. What's up? Lovely to have you here. Stacy. Um, mistletoe. I'm learning from you guys. I really don't know. <laughs> RB. Uh, lovely to see everybody here. It's time to start. So once we go ahead here and we open this new document, the first thing that I want to show you is, of course, to start with uh, setting up a document for print so let's go ahead and click on the print tab on top of the new document window and here you can start by choosing the right um, paper um, preset so the, the size of paper now i have an a3 printer so i have the flexibility to print from a3 to any lower shape um, uh, size but that's absolutely up to you depending this is a normal a4 that is a, a letter size in us uh, and uh, if you want to do a5 so something that is smaller it will be a5 so half the size of an a4 or half the size of a letter size if you want to do a3 it's simply the double so oops. an a3 will be literally double the size so depending on the printer that you have access uh, to you can choose the size that you desire I'm going to go ahead and use the A4 again, letter size in US. And then I'm going to go ahead and start naming my file. I'm going to call it holiday cutout or holiday decoration. Okay. And then I'm just going to simply go ahead and click on create. Um, as you can see, the width and the height are determined by the document preset that we're using. This is the beauty of 
using these presets. If you click on view all presets, you will see that the A3 size and other sizes are also there available for you. But also most importantly, because we did select print, we have already uh, given Illustrator the information that we will be printing uh, these files and therefore the color mode is CMYK and the raster effect is 300 PPI. And those are simply the standard settings for a document that is set to print. Then when ready, simply click on create and uh, you will see that the, the document will open up. OK, so once your document is open, you see that we have here one uh, artboard, which is, again, the size of a letter size or a four paper. So this is actually the full paper that we have over here. And what we're left to do, we know that we have three different templates. So what I'm going to do is to use the shift O uh, or shortcuts or simply head here inside. Let me zoom it up my toolbar at the bottom in order to access the artboard tool. Here it is. So the artboard tool will allow you to select and modify uh, artboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. And because I simply have one single artboard, uh, the artboard that is there will uh, be highlighted. But you can always hold the Alt or Option key, depending if you're working on a Windows or on a Mac, and then selecting your artboard, you can click and drag to create a copy, just like so. So I'm going to do that one more time. And as you can see, we have multiplied our artboard in three different artboard. To, es es uh, to exit these artboard tools, as you can see, if we click on each one of the artboard, we can actually select them. If we press the enter or return key, we can access the artboard option where we can do things like naming this so they can be template one if you want to and then we can go ahead and select the other one this can be template two and then i'm going to go ahead and select the third one and just call it template three and this is very useful because when we export the file we will know exactly which one is what um, so per each artboard we can have different uh, name as well that's extremely useful because that name will carry on through into that file name if you want to change that again, simply press the return key and we can make this one template number two just to keep things organized and we can go back and make this one um, template one. So now they're organized. Otherwise, they were two, one, three. <laughs> that was bugging me. So one, two, three, here they are. If you wish to further uh, edit your artboard, you can also uh, head to your properties panel and here you have access to this edit artboard button. So uh, just by clicking on that will pretty much be the same as selecting the artboard tool or using the shift O shortcut. To uh, exit, just simply press the little V and that will bring back our black arrow, which is our selection, uh, little selection arrow. Uh, now head into file and from here, we're going to select the place option. The place option will allow you to introduce new files. In this case, the one that I give to you with in particular, I would suggest to use the JPEG files, um, which in my case should be in my desktop. And in your case, should be available to download inside the description, both on YouTube and on our Behance. Um, let me see what is the chat talking about. Sergey saying, how's everything going? Fantastic, Sergey. We're doing really good. Uh, Robert, Claddy, the queen of shortcut. Yes, I love shortcuts. Someone called me um, MacGyver or something like that. I used to love, I don't know if I'm dating myself, but saying that I used to watch MacGyver after school and absolutely loved it. Um, I had a fantastic time um, watching MacGyver, MacGyver after school. And I think that that was probably one of the best compliments that I ever received regarding uh, my love for shortcuts. But anyway, let's keep going. So. Once we're done here by selecting place, make sure to go ahead and find uh, the right folder. For me, here it is. Here we have access to my JPEG. You can select one or multiple uh, files simply by using the shift key. So I've selected first the top one, hold the shift key and then select the third and then simply use the place button. Now here we have our um, documents also linked, but once we select place, they're here loaded next to my uh, selection tool. So they're there and it always tell and it also is telling me that we have one of three loaded, which is fantastic. Um, so all we left to do here is to simply in intersect one each corner of our A4. I know that my document is A4. So once I hover on it and thanks to our smart guides, it will intersect. I'm just simply going to click on it and it will be um, placed nice and tidy inside my page. 
Okay, so don't forget to press Command S to save, and I'm gonna zoom out, and you can either decide to save on your Creative Cloud or on your computer, that's absolutely up to you. Sometime, if you work on your computer, it can be a little bit faster, but there are so many benefits of working on your Creative Cloud machine, and you can see all these benefits listed here. So on uh, your computer, you have offline access, and I would suggest a little bit more of extra speed as well. Well, on Creative Cloud, you have auto saving, so every single change get automatically saved inside um, the Adobe server. You have a different version history, so you, that's so useful. You can access different version of your file. You can invite to edit, so you can sh actually share your file uh, and you can sync it. So if you work perhaps on Illustrator or on the iPad, you can jump in between desktop and iPad. Um, Charles, Oh, I love that. I haven't seen one of those like in such a in such a long time. So Charles has actually put in the chat one of those little um I don't even know what they're called, but like a uh, drawing made with parentheses inside, uh probably 90s sort of stuff. I love it. I don't I didn't know if you guys were still doing it in the chat in chats to these days, uh, but I used they used to be very popular when I was younger. Hashraful, happy holidays to you as well. And uh, let's go ahead and move on. So here, uh, as I say, those are the two differences. Absolutely up to you. I'm just going to save this one on my computer just to make sure that we move nice and fast uh, while we are streaming. And here now we have these decorations. So how would you proceed further? Uh, also, if we do have time, I want to talk to you real quick on how to create them. Super, super easy. Um, and I'll show you just real quick. But let's start by isolating the uh, decoration. So if you want, you can also print um, print them as they are. That's absolutely up to you. They're just JPEG or the PDF. But if you want to create something a little bit more bespoke, like placing um, actual items inside of the paper decoration, let me show you how you can start by isolating and using these as a template. So to start, I will uh, invoke the power of our pen tool, which is located on top of our toolbar here in the workspace. And the pen tool is amazing because it allows you to create precise path. Now we do not need to create a super precise path, but I will not use nothing like the brush or the pencil tool to go completely freehand because the goal here will be to draw um, pretty much around the template in order to isolate it and then print it and then save all the ink. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the pen tool. And the first thing I want to start by this one over here, just because a little bit more simple. I'm just going to click on the uh, actual design in order to start to create anchor points. Now, these anchor points are nothing but just simple uh, dots that of course will be connected by a line and they will allow us to create a path. And then uh, when we're going to close this path, we'll be able to uh, create a shape that is exactly the same shape or roughly the same shape of our template and will allow us to frame it and then to use this shape as a mask. This always inside our lovely Illustrator. So as you can see here, the more I'm drawing, the more is actually filling with the color white. And this is because um, my color right now is actually uh, inside the fill. Let me just go ahead and zoom in here so you can see it is white with a black stroke. If you want to make sure that you don't see the white so you can just have a little bit of reference, better reference, just select none or use the forward slash in order to make the fill transparent. So all you can see around here is the stroke. Uh, something else that I'm going to do is also perhaps to change the color of the stroke. You can do that while you work. I think it's pretty amazing. I'm going to make this yellow so you can right away start to see it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm simply clicking around the template that I've provided in order, as I say, to create a shape that we can use as a mask. So you can click as many times as you want. You can break the path as many times as you want if you wish to do so. Although I would strongly recommend to use the least number of anchor point, the dots as possible. Here it is. So there is another uh, lovely trick here that you can use with the pencil tool, which is the corner if you need so to do so. But in this case, we're just going to simply create all these straight segment because we have this quite geometric decoration. So it's all nice and straightforward. So as you can see in just a few click, clicks, what I'm doing here is to go in around. And actually, now that I came to the beginning of the path, um, you will see that there is a little circle next to my 
pen tool, which is there to let me know that by clicking here on the initial first anchor point of this path, I will close the path and by doing so, I will create a shape. So if I now zoom out, you can see that I have this little line that if we go into the properties panel, we can make a little bit thicker just so we have higher visibility on it, which sits there outside uh, my shape. Now, if you want to edit the path, and perhaps you've created some dots like this one that looks a little bit tighter in the shape, you can always access and modify the anchor point by pressing the letter A, clicking on them, and then simply move them. By clicking on an anchor point, you just do nothing but select them. And then by clicking and dragging, you will move it away. Now, if you want to uh, select more than one anchor point, simply click on it and then hold the shift key. And you will see that by doing so, you will be able to move more than one anchor point. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to move these a little bit far away. Now, what happens here where I create an anchor point that I don't really need? Well, I can press the letter P, jump into the pen tool real quick, hover on the point that I don't need. You will see that once you hover on a point that is already existing inside a path, the pen tool will access uh, a mode in which will allow you to delete the point simply by clicking on it. And if you wish to add a point, you will see that if you hover in an existing path, you have the little plus icon and that will allow you to create a new path or delete it if you already existed. So now what we've done here is to uh, made this uh, shape that will allow us to isolate our design. Now, don't forget that you're going to be cutting this template at the very end. So you do not have to be very precise when you proceed in doing this little shape. And let me just jump on this little two here in order to make it a little bit larger so we can have some breathing space. Here it is, especially for this side over here. OK, so what do we do now? Now, the next step will be to make sure that we click on our image, which is sitting behind our shape. And the reason why I know that it's sitting behind is because before I first introduced the shapes and then I have created the path over on it. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and then select the path simply by clicking on it. You will see that now they both are selected. And I'm going to use another magic shortcut, which is Command or Control 7, which is our shortcut that allows us to create a mask. So you will be able to isolate the template and make sure that you uh, use this uh, shape. So the shape that we created with the path. And I'm actually going to do Control Z or Command Z in a second just to show you. The reason why I'm calling this stroke and this path shape is because if we change the color of the field with the stroke, you will see that that is the actual shape that I've designed. Now, if you fill it of a color now that we already know where it's located, it doesn't matter if it helps you to select it, to switch the color. Remember, the shortcut is Shift X. Once you select the shape, the Shift X um, shortcut will allow you to swap the color from the field to the stroke. So if in this case we have, you can see it both in the actual path, we have the yellow line, but you can also see it here where we have the fill and stroke control. And again, Shift X will move the color from the fill to the stroke, just like so. So uh, absolutely up to you. We can actually leave it inside. Um, let's just leave it inside on the fill. And what I wanted to show you here is that this shape will work like cutout and it will basically almost like punch the image. So everything that is outside the shape will be hidden and the area that is covered by the field will show through. It's basically like a mask. Those are called clipping mask. There is also an options inside your menu under object and then um, clipping mask over here and make, which will allow you to do the same. As you can see, the shortcut is command seven when working on a Mac or control seven if you're working on a PC. Now, most importantly, you can create masks with images, with photos, with anything you want, also with shapes. So perhaps I'm just going to do that real quick, although it's going to look a little bit messy, but I just wanted to, to show you. So if I perhaps have, let's say, circles, oops, that's not a circle, but we can quickly transform into a circle thanks to our little corner widget. And I'm just going to make these blue and then I'm going to make another one that is red and Let's just make another one here of another color. Here it is. So I have these shapes that are just sitting there. Um, what if I want to use this shape to cut them out? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that the shapes that are there, you're going to mask are grouped. So this three circle 
needs to be first selected and then grouped. And you can do that with any shape you want, any, any graphic vector that you want. You just need to make sure to group them. So now they're grouped into a single um, element. And then you want to bring them underneath the shape. Remember, the mask always, always, always has to sit on top. Otherwise, it would, the trick doesn't work. To bring your element behind, use the command shift left bracket, and this will bring it to the back. Or you can use simply select the frame, uh, sorry, the mask, the shape that you want to use as a mask and use the command shift right bracket. Right bracket brings everything on top. Left bracket brings it down. If you incorporate the shift key, you will bring at the very top or at the very bottom. I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to bring it here. Now that we have different graphic elements, we have grouped them together and we have them behind the shape, we can perform the same shortcut by selecting both of these elements. Because remember, even if there are th four shapes overall, we have three that are grouped into one and then the mask. So there are literally two that we're selecting now. In fact, I select one, hold the shift and select the other one and command um, the command seven will pretty much do the same. So if we now have here, perhaps I should have actually um, added one more item to my selection. So just to give an idea here, we can add maybe a background of a different color, just going to make it white. Again, group everything, everything needs to be grouped, bring these to the top and then select them both command seven. Here it is. You can see that here we have also the cutout uh, showing through. So I hope that makes sense and gives a little bit more of insight in Clippy Mask. They're extremely useful to hide any part of the artwork that you do not wish to display. They're great when you want to frame perhaps images or maybe if you're creating your greeting cards, you can use the mask option to cut uh, your photos. You can maybe, you know, use this for your picture if you want to do so. Let's see if I can actually perhaps do that. I know that I have a picture. I've been visiting uh, the Color Factory. I have this very fun picture here. Let me see if I can bring it in. You can either use the place icon. This actually could be quite good. Um, let's see if we can fit us both in the image there. So you can actually use the cutout for something like a picture, just like that. Again, as I said, it worked with images as well. So simply press the command seven if you want to use it for a picture. So you can actually use a picture for your um, little decoration as well. Now, this is was a little bit, uh, uh, I wasn't planning to use this picture. So maybe it's not the best photo that will fit inside my graphic. Uh, but let's see, maybe not. But if you find a picture that works best or maybe will work with another template, maybe we can actually make it work. If you want to, you can just use other shapes to add where is the color is missing. But you get the gist. You can actually layer a picture for your decoration. So really, you can just dream whatever you can do with this uh, with this decoration is absolutely up to you. So I'm I am doing it here uh, so I can go back and use my cutout for the actual uh, flyer so I can just move it in the right position, select them both and boom, make sure that I do my clipping mask. And now this is ready for me to do whatever I want. I can perhaps resize it so I can do either something a little bit bigger by clicking and dragging one of the corner of its bounding box and holding the shift key to make sure that we resize it proportionally. Remember, if you do not hold the shift key and you simply click and drag, E will distort. Uh, so remember, the shift key is absolutely paramount for you to resize it. And then if you want to, you can make this perhaps a little bit smaller and you can create a little tiny uh, little uh, diamond shapes over there. If you want to, that's absolutely up to you. Um, that's just to save space and maybe to make the most out of your paper. So you can do one there. You can do maybe another one over here. Simply go ahead and select them and then use the uh, option key. Looks like Photoshop decided to open up. Here it is. Uh, option or Alt key to make a copy. Now that you make a copy, of course, the copy will retain the clippy mask. So here it is. We have uh, um, an actual uh, shape over there that is mask and we have different version of it. OK, so this is an option. You can always head back to your um, artboard tool. Shift O, remember, is the place to go. Let's see, it looks like my, my laptop is having some difficulties. Here it is. And then simply use the option key in order to create uh, a copy uh, of what you've just done. And maybe you can just, we can just focus on one simple decoration over here. Of course, you can repeat that for all the other decoration. In this case, I'm going to make it as big as my paper just to try to make the most and make the biggest decoration as I can. 
Um, Sean, lovely to see you here. Claudia can design anything with chewing gum and paper clip. <laughs> yes, we can make whatever we want. This is the beauty of using these apps and having fun. Um, it would be nice to have this face on the shape one. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so it looks like there is no question. Everybody's just having fun. I absolutely love that. So let's keep going here. It's time to start to decorate our shape. So how do we do that? First thing that I will do here is to go to my layers panel. And the layers panel, as you know, is a, a very, very useful panel when working in Illustrator. It allows us to group and manage our layer independently. So great control. And most importantly, you can do you can preserve also the layer by locking them. If you do not see any of the panel that I'm mentioning during this stream, do not forget that you can find them all under the window menu. In fact, they do live inside the window menu. And as you can see, the layers panel is there. That's why the ticked is there. And what I'm going to do here is to click on the little plus icon located at the bottom of the panel in order to create a few layers here. And then I can call this one template and then this one decoration and maybe this background color. Now, remember, the order of the layer stack matter. In fact, if we go ahead and perhaps uh, use the background to have a solid fill color, maybe that we can use as a background over here and perhaps we can make them just for the sake of it red, it will cover what is inside the layers below. So in this case, you want to make sure that you bring the background color underneath if that's what you fancy. But if you're like, what if I do not see my shape? Well, don't worry, you have different ways of approaching that. You can either select your shape, make sure to lock the background and then head to the properties panel. Let me go ahead and zoom back in in the shape and use the opacity settings in order to uh, bring the opacity down, although that will not give you that necessarily desired result or use the wonderful multiply. So multiply will merge the dark and the, and the light pixels and the result of this uh, blend mode. And by the way, blend mode don't do nothing but blending what is uh, the layers that you are selecting. So anything that is being um, anything that you are applying the blend to will blend it with anything that is underneath. So the result will depend on the actual brightness and darkness of the pixels of the two layers that you're blending. Uh, so in this case, we have, because our shapes are white, left and white on purpose, you only will see the darker pixels that are there to delimit the cutout um, coming through. So multiply is much better than lowering opacity. And that will allow you to choose any background that you want. But what if you want to also save your ink and not make sure that you have all of that um, <clears throat> in red? Well, there is another thing that you can do here. You can simply go ahead and select your cutout shape and uh, then bring it inside your background layer, which you have to unlock. And you can press Command F to bring it back in. And again, um, at the moment, you're not seeing it because it's just a path. If I can make it back yellow, here it is. Uh, and you can just simply use the cutout to um, do the same with the background. So literally whatever we did before, we just simply repeated it. So clipping mask using the same shape. You can access the shape and that's perhaps something very important. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the background for a second. Um, if you're not happy with uh, your cutout and your mask, especially if you're using picture or something like that, you can always double click to enter what is called isolation mode. Isolation mode will allow you to move your image around and resize it. In this case, it, I would not suggest it because you'll see it will just lose the actual uh, template. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo it. But if you want to perhaps select the template like I did before, so the shape, the actual path that we used as a clipping mask, simply click on it once and then double click it again. You will see here when this top bar up and, uh, appears um, here under the options bar that tells you that you already entered a group so-called isolation mode your layer would told you tell you that you're in isolation mode you can also open the layers panel and the first one is the actual shape so the actual clipping mask you simply click on it to select it here it is you can see that is moving around so command z to undo because we're happy now with the size when to lock the template want to make sure that we have our background there ready to go. Maybe we can change the color of the background. Um, 
by unlocking the layer, double clicking on it. Again, we need to double click in on it to access the original color. And maybe here we can also use the color picker in order to select any color we want. I'm quite happy with this uh, uh, powder blue. I think it's quite lovely, reminds me of the winter, the cold and uh, um, much, much more. So mama is there. So my mom is there. Uh, let me see if I can ask her what is the name of this in Italian. Mamma, se mi senti, come si chiama questa pianta in inglese, in italiano? <laughs> We've done a little bit of Italian as well. So maybe she can tell us in the chat. Uh, Julie Lucarelli is there. <laughs> Everybody now is saying hi to her because they, we already know that that's my mom joining the stream. Let's see. I don't know if she has the volume on, if she's just watching, but probably she'll, she'll let us know. That's so funny. It's the first time that I actually speak full Italian in... Um, on the stream. Okay, so we have our background, we have our template, we have the blend mode to make sure that we uh, get rid of the white and we just flatten the darker color on top of our white so we have our creases coming through. Um, if you want to, you can also uh, change the opacity after the blend. So if you go ahead now and lock the background and then head back to the template here and select the template to which we have applied the multiply blend mode, we can also now drop the opacity. And I would suggest to do so just because when you're gonna go ahead and print um, your file, you don't, you kind of lose um, the overall um, little shapes. Let me just go ahead and see if I can jump in here. You will lose these little um, gray folded bits because they just kind of land on the parts that you're gonna they're, they're gonna just land on the creases so you don't really see it once your final decoration is together because it just happens to be on the creases again but if you wish to um, perhaps make it even less evident and just to be subtle more subtle as possible not only apply the blend mode but also apply lower the opacity the opacity only after the blend mode because remember what we really want to achieve is that um, making sure that first of all we see the background color coming through and again it's very important here as well the order of the layers panel in fact if we go back and we perhaps swap the templates layer with the background layer the templates will completely disappear under the background okay so now that we're done we can go ahead and lock our template as well so we have our decoration layer which we can start to fill in with any sort of decoration we want i'm going to show you just something real quick that you can do maybe you can do a starry night um, in order to do a star just simply press on the letter m and click and drag to create a square fill it with any color you want i'm just going to use a yellow for now but you can also perhaps let's let's use a white i'm just going to drag it outside so we can see a little bit better here i'm going to go ahead and uh, apply an effect in particular a distorting effect uh, we're going to use uh, that pucker and bloat and then i'm going to just drag the slider towards the pucker and making sure that the preview is active you can see the square transforming into this little star shape and you can do it as far as you want then simply click on ok and here it is we have our first star i'm going to leave it there so i can use the option to click and drag and just move it inside my template now you might like the shape like that with a little pointy bits at the end uh, if you don't like it and maybe you want to some rounded corners the way that i can suggest to achieve that is simply by um, adding a stroke and then making sure that your stroke will change your cap and corners into rounded and here it is we start to get a little bit of the round edges at the end and you can keep the stroke of any color you want in this case i'm just going to keep it white so it just kind of uh, fits a little bit better because I want this monochrome star. You can change the shape as much as you want. And then you can bring it here just to create a copy. Now, this effect, you can always access it inside the appearance panel as any other panel um, is available under the window menu. You can undo the pucker and bloat. This is still a square. So if you wish to edit it, perhaps you, you just... Um, uh, pulled it in a little bit too much you can always double click on it to edit the effect do not go back to effect and then redo what we just done because that will try to apply a further effect and it can get messy so what i would recommend to do is just simply to double click on the effect and then here as you can see you can reduce it a little bit if you wish to do so and click on ok now the appearance panel is amazing because here you can also modify the stroke maybe it's a little bit too thick so you can just move it from here and you're done. 
Now, something else that you want to do, perhaps, if you want to, if you're happy with your final uh, star shape, you can go ahead and uh, here simply um, move. Uh, go to object and expand appearance now once you've expanded your experience appearance you will not be able uh, anymore to uh, change it so all you have to do now here is to simply decorate and uh, uh, just distribute whatever decoration you want inside your little um your little template and again you can write a message you can write a text you can create a pattern if you're looking to do the little holly Oh, my mom came with a name, Ardesia. <laughs> I would have never, never remembered that. No wonder. I probably didn't even know that. Thank you. Grazie, mamma. Okay, Ardesia apparently is the plant in Italian. I thought it would have a much more simple name, but no. There we go. So you can do any decoration as you want. I think that the star is quite a nice. I would love to see what you guys create um, here with the holidays. Uh, I think it's super, super amazing to see what everybody makes um, during the holiday. And uh, perhaps you can post it on Instagram and tag me and Adobe Live because it will be very fantastic to see what you create. You can also perhaps if you're going with the star at the moment, I think I'm just a little bit overdoing. I was happy when they were a little bit less star, perhaps something like that. Uh, what I would add are some dots. I like to make a starry nights. Uh, again, I'm going to press the letter L to access the ellipse tool. And here uh, I'm going to start to add some snow, maybe like, you know, some little star because some of the star are little shining star and the other star, we can just leave them nice and round. You can perhaps make a darker blue color if you wish to do so. If you want to have the same plant like the one I've created in the previous stream, um, there is also on my website, amcloudy.com slash resources, the file available for you. Um, the file is actually here this one for the greeting cards you have access to the actual plant if you watch the how to stream i'm just going to go ahead and copy those for now uh, there is also a stream about how to animate these assets so if you go and i think it's how to and then animation or how to um holiday cards you will be able to find all these assets or learn how to make it from scratch yourself and then you can go ahead and uh, use them as well. I'm very happy for you to use them. I made them for you. So feel free to um, to use them to your pleasure in order to decorate your little paper decoration uh, to use with your family. I would love to know uh, if you're going to plan to do this activity, maybe on Christmas Day, Christmas morning. Uh, what are you are going to use this decoration for? Let me know in the chat. It's always super exciting uh, to learn what you guys are taking from this workshop because it's always pretty lovely um, to see what what your ideas are after watching the stream so also feel free to leave a comment inside the youtube channel it always make my day uh, when i can go back inside that adobe live youtube channel and i see all your lovely comments or feedback i found them very very useful so as you can see here this is taking shape um, because it's looking quite a starry night what i'll probably do is to change the color of the sky it's looking like a little bit um too a little bit too bright so we can always do that um or maybe let's we can create another one here as well so let's go ahead and use our lovely arbor tool shift o again to create a duplicate if by any chance you click and drag and you duplicate the artboard but not the artwork is because this move artwork with artboard is not is deselected so make sure that you tick this box to duplicate both the artboard and the artwork it's also telling you that if the layer is locked, it's not going to happen. Very good tip. Thank you, Illustrator. So now we're going to go ahead and click and drag to make sure that um, we unlock the layers. And then here from the background, we can uh, just simply go ahead and click on the color, which is over there. And we can change it to something um, like, oh, I quite like a yellow. But I was looking for something like a darker blue, perhaps. Yeah, something like that. And you can create as many different colors as you please. And those then are ready to be exported and printed. If you're wondering how to export them, uh, export them, you can, you have different options. Um, so you can go into file and then from here you can save as, and that's perhaps the best option. And when saving as, the solution will be to save as Adobe PDF. Adobe PDF will allow you to access and you can here choose the artboards. Um, I believe my artboards were now four and five. 
the last two because the first remember we created the first three together and those two are the one that i added so arbor number four and arbor number five you can then go ahead and click on save make sure that you choose a destination folder i'm going to choose my desktop so it's going to be nice and easy to find and i'm going to go ahead and click on save to save it now when you save on adobe pdf the reason why i'm asking you to save this format is because then you will be able to choose the high quality print format and remember we started our document by setting up a document for print and therefore high quality print also makes sense because we want to make sure that we print a nice sharp beautiful colors i haven't done so here so the color is a little bit dull um, but again you can go ahead and do whatever you want with your uh, specific specific color if you just want to export it quickly as a jpeg you can use the usual um, option command or alt command e shortcut but remember that will save a quality for screen so it will override your settings but because we've already been so nice and neat we used illustrator with a print intent now all we have to do is to save it as a PDF, make sure, making sure that we select high quality print. We don't have to worry about um, mark and bleeds so much because again, we already have the bleed outside we left. And if you're wondering what the bleed is, is literally, I mean, just go back here, um, is literally this little extra area that I left outside. And we have also our flap, oops, there. This is creating a shadow. So hopefully you can see here a little bit better. So we have this little extended area of the background and then just make sure that you save the PDF. And once you click on save PDF, here it is, is there ready for you to be uh, printed. Let me just bring it back so we can see the full shape. So here, all you have to do is just to send it to the printer and then or cut it out and you will go back into your little template over here. So once you have the template, you can score it. Uh, I usually use uh, the back of the scissors so where are the scissors over here so once i cut it i just use the back of the scissor there just to score it very lightly especially if you're using standard printing paper um, that can just be a little bit harsh so use your finger uh, what i tend to do when i if you've seen those um if you're using cardboard and the one that i've used for my absolute project what i do is i bend them backwards and by bending them backwards and then bringing them back it just really gives that beautiful sharp line so don't forget that uh, that's a fantastic um, tip also if you're creating origami always bend it on the opposite direction first and then bring it forward and you will see that your crease will be so nice and sharp and it will maintain its position as well and same here don't forget to do the same with your little flaps so following the um little dotted line all you're going to be left to do here is to follow to bend and uh, the flaps so here we have these little flaps that's where the glue is going to go and uh, then we have to bend the little um the little side so in this case we have nearly done all of them and then once you crease your artwork by following all the line uh, lines you will see that it will come out together in just a moment so uh, i think that we have one more bend to do here one more scoring i'm doing it um here because i want you guys to see it on screen but if you actually press against the hard surface like a table that'll be so much better it's so much harder um, to just you know have it here in my hands if i actually have a table that will make it so much easier and here we are so what next step will be just simply to put some glue and then our little diamond is ready for decoration now something that i've done in the past was also for christmas for your loved one to write a message inside this paper so you can write a message for your loved one uh, maybe if you have a crush on someone that could be a fantastic idea or maybe for someone that already know that you love them or you just want to remind them of your love especially during this holiday season or you can send that also um, in the mail you can write your message inside and then you can just create this lovely decoration just give it to them so they have no idea and then during the holiday or whenever is a special moment for you you can tell them hey go ahead and open the decoration and they can find the surprise inside. So hopefully I gave you enough ideas to enjoy your holidays with this activity. There is so much more. I know that we have about 20 seconds to go, but there is a schedule uh, that I want to show you. So there is so much fun here coming at Adobe Live. Uh, we have uh, building your snowman with the amazing Val coming up in just about five minutes. So go ahead and grab a cup of tea because Val is coming. Oops, let me come back here. Um, 
Val is coming with Build a Snowman. And then we have end of the year a postcard with a lovely Easy Poirier. I love both Val and Easy. What a wonderful lineup. Um, so many lovely ladies. We had uh, our uh, lovely Anna uh, starting the day with winter themed composite. And don't forget that the uh, Behance Adobe Live, the, the Adobe Live uh, holiday is uh, going to keep going for the rest of the week. Unfortunately, it is time to say goodbye. Don't forget to download your templates and have fun with this lovely decoration cut out. And of course, happy holidays. And I will see you very soon. Goodbye, everybody.